Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess and today we are going to be doing something a little bit different or I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be focusing a little bit more on some watercolor nail art more than the dipping process. I'm going to show part of my process but that's not going to be the focus of the video today. I am using two colors from Sparkle & Co. They are both from previous sub bags. I cannot honestly remember which ones, um, but the light lavender is Lavender Moon. That's the one I'm gonna be painting on. And then this gorgeous glitter slash foil is Fairy Shortcake. So those are the colors we're using. I'm also gonna be using some store-bought water-based acrylics that I got, I think, at Target. If I can find them on Amazon or something similar, I will link the post, post the link not link the post <laughs> down in the description box for you. Um, I'm using two art brushes. One is this fine liner brush that I got in a set from Amazon. And then the other one is from a set that I got in one of my Triple D Diva boxes, but I've seen them in other places. And if I can find them on their website or on Amazon or somewhere, I will link that as well. Um, so we're going to get into the dipping process, but I'm going to keep it real short and quick. I'm only going to show the first dip of each color um, and not even the full process because honestly, I really wanted the focus of this video to be on the nail art and it was already getting to be really long. So I did edit out the majority of my dipping process, but if you are interested in watching any of my videos where I go into detail about my dipping process, I will link those videos up in the cards for you. I believe I have a playlist, so I will link that. So I'm going to dip Lavender Moon, and then I'm going to do the lay-in method right here for Fairy Shortcake, and I am going to then do the remainder of the dipping process off camera, including my filing and shaping, and then we'll get into the nail art. In the meantime, I have a pretty exciting announcement to make. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I, on a whim, <laughs> just spur of the moment, decided after seeing an ad pop up on my Instagram feed, to enter the nail icon competition, which is run by Life and Style Magazine. And so I was accepted. They accepted me into the competition and I am really, really excited about it. Um, it is a voting competition. So I'm gonna need all of your help. Um, you can vote for me. Uh, voting starts today, today, March 27th at 10 a.m. Voting opens and you can cast your vote once a day. Round one is from March 27th to April 6th. If I make it into the top 20, I move on to the next round. Um, I'm going to be posting daily reminders on the community feed um, and it'll also be in my link tree on Instagram. So please, please, please vote for me. Um, I'm really excited. The grand prize is $5,000 and a feature in Life & Style magazine. It's a fabulous opportunity and I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm up against some really stiff competition. Y'all, there are so many talented, talented nail artists, including a few I know and you may know. And I'm sure that they'll be posting about it as well. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, I will actually also post a link for my profile where you can vote in the description box below as well. So, you know, fingers crossed. Um, you know, I have no expectations. It's just really exciting to be a part of it. And um, it's a great opportunity, a great experience. Would I be excited to win? Uh, yeah, of course I would be. Am I going to be ruined if I don't win? No, <laughs> it's just going to be for fun. So if I win, it's just a bonus and I will be over the moon, um, but I'm not expecting it. So, but your help would be so appreciated. So just keep your eye out for my daily reminders. Um, and that's all. I just wanted to mention that and let you know how excited I am about it. Uh, and I look forward to, you know, seeing where it takes me. 
All right, so now that I've made that announcement, I have finished my dipping process, most of it off camera. I'm activating now and I'm gonna file buff shape everything off camera and I'm gonna come back and we'll create some beautiful spring flowers using a watercolor technique with acrylic paints. So the first step in this technique is to apply a matte top coat. You can, if you are a gel user, use a gel top coat. I, however, am avoiding gels as much as possible due to my sensitivity. So I'm using a nail lacquer um, top coat. This one is called Matte Made in Hell and it's by Mooncat. As with many nail art techniques that involve painting, a matte top coat really helps to protect your color and it gives you a smooth surface to work on. Basically, it gives you a nice smooth canvas. So the main color that I'm working with is that bright fuchsia pink, but I decided it was a little too bright pink. So I added a little touch of purple to it so that it would cl more closely match the foils um, that are in Fairy Shortcake. Now, the way that this technique works is you're going to take your acrylic paint and you're gonna dip your brush in some water and you're going to add the water to your acrylic paint. That's one way to do it. That's the way I chose to do it. There are other ways of using acrylic paints and water and I will touch on that a little bit. But first, I just wanna explain what I'm doing. So I'm dipping my brush into the water and I'm adding the water to the acrylic paint and I'm thinning down the acrylic paint. And the next thing that I'm going to do, once I've got it the consistency that I want, is I'm going to load up my brush and then I'm going to create my first petal. And I'm going to start out with just kind of a general petal shape I don't want it to be a perfect circle or a perfect oval. I want it to be um, sort of an irregular shape because, you know, most petals are not perfectly round. Um, and then I am going to wipe my brush off and let that little pool of watered down acrylic sit for a few seconds. And then I'm gonna use my dry brush and I'm going to soak up the excess water that's inside that shape and what it should do is leave sort of a darker ring on the outside and a lighter color on the inside hopefully you'll be able to see what i'm talking about but as i kind of like absorb that liquid back up into the dry brush you can kind of see there where it's kind of lighter in the center and a little bit darker on the outside. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to keep drying my brush off. Now, if I want the consistency uh, to be a bit thinner, I'll add a little more water. Um, you can also go in with just a little bit of water on your brush to lighten up the center of that petal if you feel like it's too dark. Um, so I'm gonna go in and do my second petal here. And you can see that second petal worked just a bit better than the first one. Um, I am going to disclose here that um, I'm gonna speed through this flower. And the reason that I am doing that is because um, I end up wiping it off <laughs> and starting over because I did not like the way, the shape that it was taking. I just wasn't, I wasn't loving how it was coming out so um, I am going to finish that up and I'm going to do like a little butt off to the side there um, and then I'm going to take a look at it and think yeah I don't like it <laughs> and I'm going to take it off so I'm going to let you watch that and I'll be back in a second to explain what I'm going to do to fix it
So right here, this is the moment. I'm looking at that little bud and I'm really loving the way it looks and I'm just feeling like that flower is not doing it for me. It's too dark. I'm trying to lighten it up. It's not working. And I finally was like, mm, nope, don't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to take a lint-free wipe with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and I'm just going to wipe it off. And that's the beauty of having the matte top coat is that the acrylic paint, because it's, you know, it's... It's water-based, it just rubs right off. It doesn't even stain anything. And I can start from scratch, which is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so what I realized was, um, A, I had started with my acrylic paint too thick. I hadn't watered it down enough. And so it was just not giving me the watercolor vibe that I was wanting. And also it was a little bit too uniform. I wanted it to look a little more organic, um, less like perfect, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I know, right? What? You don't want it to be perfect? But I mean, in nature, flowers, they're perfect, but not in a perfectly symmetrical kind of way. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that's why I decided to start over. And my second attempt, I was much, much happier with. I was a lot more careful to um, make my shapes a little more irregular and I thinned out the paint a lot more and I think it just worked a lot better than the first one. So I'm glad I started over. Now that I've explained everything that I'm doing, I'm going to continue with the same technique. I'm going to create my petal. I'm going to dry off my brush completely. I'm going to absorb the excess liquid from the center of the petal and then I'm going to move on and create more petals. Um, I think I created a total of four petals for this flower, and then, um, of course, I made the little bud off to the side, and I'm gonna make another single petal bud on the other side, and when I come back, we're gonna create some stems and some leaves. to add some details okay so we're gonna do some leaves and some stems for these flowers and the only green that I had was this like it's kind of a bright green and it's really pretty but I wanted to kind of deepen it up a little bit so I put it, the tiniest little amount of black in there just to kind of give it more of a naturey kind of green does uh, I don't know naturey is that a word Anyway, the black did exactly what I wanted it to do, and now I have a green that I'm happy to work with. So I'm gonna take my liner brush, and I did dip it in the water, and I ran it through the acrylic paint a couple of times, because I, I do want it to be a little bit darker. I'm not doing the exact same technique. I am just kind of lining out these stems, but I did want the consistency to be slightly thinner than the regular acrylic paint. Unfortunately, I was out of frame for part of that. I apologize. Sometimes when I'm really concentrating, I forget that I'm supposed to be in frame, <laughs> uh, especially when I'm creating very thin lines like this. So anyway, uh, finally back in frame and I'm gonna finish creating the stems and then we're gonna add a little bit of a detail at the uh, base of each flower. 
and then we will go back to using the watercolor technique to create some leaves. So this is what we've got so far. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. So I'm going to add a bit more water to this green so that I can create some leaves. And I'm only going to do two leaves, but I'm going to use the same technique that I used for the petals where I create the shape of the leaf and I let it pool for a couple of seconds and then I use my dry brush to absorb the liquid and it leaves the shape of a leaf. When I'm done creating these leaves, I'm going to use my liner brush to create a little bit of, um, you know, veining. It's not detailed. I just do one little vein down the center of the leaf um, because, you know, I was starting to go cross-eyed at this point. So I'm going to finish creating these leaves. And when I come back, I'm going to show you how I protect my nail art from the activator because I will be using a dip top coat over this. All right, I've created this beautiful nail art and now I want to protect it so that I can apply a dip top coat. And what I'm using is my go-to for nail art protection and that is my smudge free top coat from Anneology. I use this stuff over my water slides, over my nail stickers, over acrylic paints and of course over any stamping that I might do. So it really is something that's very useful. I think everyone who does nail art should have a smudge free top coat in their arsenal of nail art supplies. Does it have to be Maniology's smudge free top coat? Nope. Other companies do make smudge free top coats um, and you're welcome to use whichever one you like, whichever one works best for you. I happen to just have the one from Maniology on hand and it's the one that I use a lot. So we've moved on to activation and I did activate the uh, non nail art nails first and then once the smudge free top coat was dry I applied activator right on top of that and there were no issues at all and now I can go right in with my dip top coat but I did make sure to allow the activator to fully dry on my accent nail. That way I don't contaminate and harden my top coat brush. Even though Dipomania's top coat isn't that easy to contaminate, you know, activator doesn't absorb into the smudge free top coat as easily as it absorbs into just dip powder. So that's something to bear in mind. I'm going to stop yammering on now and let you watch the magic that is a glossy top coat. And when I return, we'll apply some cuticle oil and wrap it up. Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot. There's a little surprise. I didn't remember to film it, but there's a picture of it at the end. Guess what? These colors glow. Yes, they do. <laughs> so make sure. So make sure that you hang out until the very end so you get to see those pictures.
Here we have the final look, and I love how this came out. Um, I do want to practice more. I think that it will get better with practice, and I have some other design ideas for this watercolor technique I'm really excited to try. Um, if you've ever tried this technique, let me know how it went for you down in the description box. I'd love to know if you have any tips or tricks for me. Um, because this was my first attempt. I mean, I've practiced a few times on some swatch sticks, but this was my first attempt on my own nails. So um, it was uh, trial and error, but I'm pretty happy with the results. So I am going to finish up this mani with some cuticle oil, as I always do. And while I do that, I'm just going to throw out a little reminder that it is March 27th and at 10 a.m. voting opens for the nail icon contest and i am one of the contestants in this competition if you enjoy my videos if you enjoy my nail art and you think that i could be the next nail icon head on down into the description box and click on the link there at 10 a.m and cast your vote for me i would really really appreciate it Thank you so much for being here. I really hope that you did enjoy this video, that you learned something new or found something interesting and that you will click that like button because that helps me know to continue creating content like this for you. And I really do enjoy doing that. So also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you here with me on a regular basis. And if you have any questions or thoughts for me, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and I really hope you all have a great week. See you later. Bye-bye now.